All right, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. This is the video on how to use Paraview to do basic visualizations of your CFD. This video will not cover calculations. It'll be in another video. This one will just be to show how to create the visuals and to get a visual representation of the airflow across your rocket. Now, I'm going to show the rocket and then an example with a fin can but everything the process is still the same so when you first finish your CFD analysis in Onzel go ahead and close it don't hit open with pair view right away I like to close everything and restart the computer because you just used a lot of CPU and RAM let's just do a restart and refresh everything on the computer so when that's restarted and everything's good go ahead and open up pair view so now you're going to go to file open it's going to bring this dialog box up. Go ahead to your data dump area, and then you'll see two separate folders, mesh case and case. If you go in mesh case, see this pv.foam? Do not use that one. I repeat, do not use that one. We need to go to case folder. I repeat, the case folder, and use that PV foam. So to repeat that process and to reiterate, file, open, then go to your data dump folder, double click case, and then pv.foam, hit open. And then on the left hand side, you'll see properties. Do not hit apply yet. Go down to case type instead of reconstructed, do decomposed. Scroll down just a little and make sure patch default faces is selected. This is the refined rocket mesh inside. This internal mesh, this is where all your flow was. Go ahead and hit apply. It's going to load and you'll see the beautiful cube that we made in the flow domain and you're probably like, hey, yours is back to a regular cube. Yes, I changed it so it would run a little faster. So, um, now you're probably wondering, oh, well, there's not really too much in there, but you can see the, the rocket body. And if we first things we need to do is we actually need to go to the last timestamp of the entire case that was 2000 iterations so go ahead and hit last frame and I'm going to change the type to the velocity vector so you can kind of see in and out see how those those are the walls that's the in and the out okay that doesn't really do much for us I mean that's cool I guess alright so let's get into some nitty-gritty first thing first go to tools go to manage plugins go down to surface LIC click it uncompress it and hit auto load and then hit load selected we need that here in just a moment now you can go through each one of these and look at the different things of what it does and stuff and it's kinda cool it looks like it's the rear of the rocket since that looks like the rocket fin region so that must be the inlet. Okay, so that doesn't really do much for us. So I'm just going to go back to pressure. And I'm going to, let's see, what should I do first? Let's do a slice. Let's see if we can see inside of it. So I'm going to make sure pv.foam is highlighted. Click slice. I don't want to slice it down this way. So let's go along the Y normal. Sure. And... Yeah, let's do that. Then hit apply. Okay. So now you can see inside and you can see where the rocket was. And if we change to different vectors, you can see how things change. Let's go to the velocity. So you can see that some air got inside because it's hollow and there's no closing. But you can see how the rocket is pretty streamlined, especially. I moved the cutting plane, whoops, especially around the, um, whoops, I need to bring it back this way and apply. I killed it because I keep moving this. So let's go ahead, delete, click this, do a slice again around the normal and hit apply. Do I have my rocket? I do. Okay. 
So with the velocity vector, I was saying that it's pretty streamlined, not a lot of stuff going on. All right, this is kind of cool. So what else could we do? Well, that surface LIC thing I said to make sure to load, let's, let's test that out. So I'm going to go to surface and hit surface LIC. So it shows these streamlines now, but it's a little dark. So if we scroll down and we scroll down, scroll down, 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 until it says rendering, we see blend, go to multiply, enhance contrast, go to color only, and then I'm going to go up to the top, slice type plane, show plane. I'm going to uncheck that so I can see. There we go. And now you can kind of see these stream tracers on the inside of what's going on with the rocket and the velocity. I mean, if you look at the fins, the air hits it. Not much happening as it leaves. So, but that's pretty normal for, for a rocket in and, and a wind tunnel. But around the nose cone, it's kind of cool. You kind of see how it splits. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, so that's one thing. You know, I mean, that that's cool. It does some stuff. All right, but I'm going to go ahead and we're going to delete that. Now, we're going to get into a little bit more fancy stuff. Okay. Yep, okay. We're going to click on this button right here called Stream Tracer. And then we're going to look at some of these properties leave all the defaults and I'm going to seed type see this line I don't want that line I want to use a point cloud for right now and then we're gonna hit apply and then it's gonna do this and you're gonna be like oh wow I don't really see much I mean that we could zoom in right here and probably guess that's the inside of the rocket tube and this is the tail end you know because based off of how these stream tracers are grow are uh, tapered and going so what I need to do now is click on PV foam go to filters go to common extract block scroll all the way back to the top under boundary hit default faces and then hit apply now that'll load the rocket body okay great now what do we do with all these stream tracers okay highlight stream tracer one integration direction switch it from both to forward or backwards whatever your hearts desires and it will, wherever the point cloud is, that's where it's going to put those stream tracers. So you could control the radius of the point cloud, you know, 0 0.05, hit enter, and hit apply, and it's going to put the stream tracers right along there. And then you could, you know, hide the sphere and see how those tracers react around certain parts and then you can even change the color not the color the vector since the only vector that we have available right now underneath here is U, then we should probably switch it up here to be the same now speaking of color if we click this right here the edit color map we can click on this heart to open up some favorites I don't know click yellow blue gray the cool to warm is the default hit apply hit close and now we've got all of that and then we could click the extract block and switch it to its velocity and you know you've got all that cool stuff alright that's cool we got some stream tracers here well let's switch the back to cool to warm apply hit close switch this back to pressure oh change the scale you can click this right here is set range and change it to what you want and then hit rescale but I'm just gonna leave it at default stream tracer let's yeah that one's fine um, okay yeah the last thing I want to show with stream tracer before we move to the next is if I do a line you can shrink everything down with that line you can also use the coordinates to position it. Wow, that went wherever you want. But I'm going to use the 2D views. 
I'm going to try, I'm going to attempt to shrink this down. This can get a little tricky. <laughs> and then hit apply, just see where it's at. Yeah, and you can see how you can control where whoops let's move that out of the way that stream tracer let's shrink it down just a little bit more and then we can move it you know yeah see that pretty nifty and you could shrink it down small enough so that you could just put it right in front of the fin and then have the stream tracer follow the fin I mean it's kinda cool Okay, so by using these 2D views up here, I was able to position it in a decent spot. And you can kind of see how it, you know, splits right along here. And we can hit show line. And then if we wanted to actually really shrink that down. Hit apply. You know, there we go. And then go ahead and hit unhide the line. I mean, hide the line. Resolution, we could even change that down to like 500. Hit apply. What about 100? Yeah. And then you can kind of, it th thins out those lines a little bit. So that's one way of getting some cool stream tracers on there. But I'm going to show you another method here in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and load up another project. And then but all the same techniques apply. I just wanted to show you on this other rocket fin can, so I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Okay, so this is a fin can that I just threw in CFD. I was just curious how it would work. I mean, you can see the velocity just smashing into it and, and all that stuff. And uh, let's go to the last timestamp and switch to the velocity vector. So you can see how this one is, is working out. The color mapping on this one works pretty well. So the last thing I wanted to show was how to get the stream tracers embedded onto the object itself. And that's really simple. If you go to surface and then surface LIC, this one I really like a lot. And then we scroll down to the blending mode again, or the color mode I should say, and change it from blend to multiply, and then enhance contrast to color only. And that way, I wanted to show it on this one because it has a lot of change in color. And you can see the swirl of all the, the airflow around just the fin can because it's a bluff body and there's going to be a ton of swirl right here. With the rocket body, it was just perfectly streamlined. And I mean, it was kind of uninteresting if you think about it. So, but this one visually, I think is a lot better in my opinion. And this is probably my favorite view because you can see all the streamlines buried on it. But all the same stuff that I showed in the beginning of the video applies to any any object. So it's just following the the steps. So yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, you can see even along the launch lugs just how how it flows. Kind of cool. Anyways, that's just the basics of the visuals. Wow, I can't speak. The visualizations in Paraview and how to set them up. I think I covered everything that I needed to, at least for basics. I don't think I missed too much of anything. This will be enough to at least get you going. So, anyway, the next video, I don't know when that one will be out, but hopefully soon will be on how to actually use the data to calculate things because you can add in calculators to calculate the drag force and all of that that wonderful stuff so um, I hope that helps now one thing in the CFD in the second video you can just try a few of the default options like just steady flow doesn't even need to be transient you can do steady flow with RANS and just start messing around with with things but anyways thank you for watching and I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope 
that it gives you some idea of how to use the program and um, I'm excited to share all this knowledge with you and this is 100% free it's all open source so and it's all used by NASA too so if it's good enough for them I mean I guess it's good enough for us alright well thank you for watching and then hopefully I'll get the next video out soon